Hey everyone, Nurlnar here. I have some free time today, so I thought I'd make a little video about an acquisition I recently made. A little bit earlier I had made a, a pretty lengthy video review of this uh, Cobra 2500 watt power inverter. And this is just a very inexpensive, uh, poor quality, consumer grade inverter, uh, like most of them are. But uh, I thought I'd make this video about uh, this Xantrex 600 watt pro watt inverter which is uh, still a kind of a consumer grade inverter, but it's a much better quality one. So I thought I'd do two things, uh, contrast a good quality inverter with a standard low quality one, and two, talk about some of the little quirks about some of these inverters that uh, sometimes cost people a lot of money in blown up inverters when they try to use them. So if you've ever considered uh, using one of these little power inverters to power your home, hooking it up to your uh, breaker box and such, uh, you might want to stay tuned because uh, it could save you quite a bit of money if you're not aware of some of these things. So I got this uh, inverter on an online auction site and it was kind of an accident. It was one of those deals where I thought I was buying one thing and uh, after I placed my bid I realized that I was actually buying something else. But uh, it kind of worked out okay anyway because this was sold as is. Um, the seller claimed that he did not know the current condition of it so I assumed that it was broken. But uh, as it turns out, I, I took it home, cleaned the spiders out of it, powered it up, and uh, everything worked perfectly. So it uh, may not be what I thought I purchased, but I still got a decent deal on it at least. I may actually end up reselling this unit later, but uh, for now we'll use it to make this video. It is a, a 600 watt modified sine wave pro watt inverter from Xantrex. Uh, Xantrex has long made some of the higher quality inverters on the market. They make uh, hardwire units, sine wave, modified sine wave. All those good things. This is one of their lowest end inverters, but uh, still pretty decent. Xantrex was bought by Schneider Electric a number of years ago, 2008 or something like that. And uh, I really can't speak for the quality of their newer products. Their product portfolio seems to have changed quite a bit recently. Uh, but uh, I can say that their old stuff, like this, which I think was made in around uh, 2003, is, uh, is pretty good. So. I picked this up uh, on the online auction site, tested it out already, and it uh, works great. So I just wanted to, to kind of show this thing off um, and talk about it a little bit. So here it is on my table. Uh, boring stuff here. I got it hooked up through some 4 gauge cable. It's got 4 uh, gauge lugs on it here, um, which actually is necessary for a 600 watt inverter. Um, this one is 600 watts continuous so it's sold, and a 1200 watt surge. Um, if we go back to this one that I'd covered earlier, 2500 watts continuous, 5000 watt peak. Well, on almost in almost every case on inverters, this peak value is completely meaningless, and even 2500 watts I found out was untrue. It's only 2000 watts continuous, 2500 peak. Um, but uh, this one is a better quality one, it's rated at 600 watts continuous and 1200 watts peak. And uh, I found out that it'll actually do almost 700 watts continuously, and it will do a 1200 watt peak for real for about five seconds, and then it'll shut down. So this inverter, even though it's a 600 watt little jobby, powers a load almost as large as this one in most cases. If you're powering a, uh, a refrigerator or something, <clears throat> this one's almost as good as this one. And for an example of that, here is my refrigerator. It's a full size refrigerator. And uh, that little 600 watt inverter will actually power this refrigerator, which has a startup surge of around 1200 watts. Um, it starts it up and runs it just fine. Uh, the, uh, the Cobra 2500 watt inverter also does, but it, it takes much of what the inverter has to actually get it started. So if you buy a good quality one, you can actually get by with a much smaller inverter than you can if you get a, a really cheap one. So 1000 watts doesn't necessarily mean 1000 watts. Each inverter has a has a different quality level in it. This is the battery bank that I'm using for this test. It's just uh, two deep cycle batteries, just cheap deep, deep cycle batteries that uh, actually work pretty well. Um, hooked up together in parallel. I have these rather long 8 gauge cables connecting them together, but uh, it's good enough for this. Just a couple battery clamps on it. Um, I should mention that, uh, I haven't said this before, but uh, Lead acid batteries like this can and do explode, and it's probably a bad idea for me to be doing this inside my house here, but I'm going to do it anyway. I wouldn't recommend that to, uh, to other people. I know that these batteries are in pretty good shape, but uh, if there's a manufacturing defect in them, it's possible that they could spark and explode. 
that would not be good. Anyway, I have, uh, oh, I forgot to plug it in. Just a second here. All right. So I have my uh, inverter here. I'm going to power it on. And uh, the fan starts up immediately um, when you turn the power switch on, which isn't necessarily a good thing. It draws, uh, of course, it consumes power. And it draws, draws dust into the unit, which can uh, cause problems long term. But uh, I'll get into that when I open it up. In any case, I wanted to show how this inverter is uh, superior to the uh, Cobra inverter um, in a couple of different ways. So I have for my loads here a 40-watt uh, light and uh, an electric heater. I don't actually have a, an oscilloscope or something that can show me what the voltage waveform of this thing does um, with a changing load, but it's kind of bright in the house right now. But I'm going to turn this light on just so you can see, uh, see uh, approximately how, um, how intense that light is. And uh, the light output of uh, an incandescent bulb like this one will obviously change with, uh, with voltage. So I have my electric heater here. It's about 600 watts on low and 900 on medium. This is a 600 watt inverter. So if I change it from uh, onto low and off, you can see that the intensity of the light really doesn't change much at all. And even if I go to medium, which is 900 watts, the intensity of that light hardly changes at all. So this heater on high is about 1500 watts, even though this is a 600 watt inverter. Most of the cheap ones would shut down. So I'm going to turn this thing on high and watch the light here. It dims quite a bit and the inverter finally shut off, but uh, it actually handles that 1500 watt surge pretty damn well uh, for a 600 watt unit like this. And this is another little thing that I wanted to mention. <clears throat> so you go down here and the, uh, the fault light is on. A lot of the less expensive ones will try to uh, restart immediately after a fault and they'll just sit there and cycle your load on and off, on and off, on and off continuously. And uh, if there's a brown, it's off in a brownout condition uh, when it's doing that. If it's unable to start your load, it'll be a brownout condition every time it tries to start it up. And that, that condition could eventually fry some, uh, some other loads. Uh, perhaps a motor would overheat if it doesn't have an over temperature sensor or, or who knows what. But uh, this one protects against that because the fault condition requires that you cycle power on the switch. That may be a little bit annoying to do, but uh, it does protect your loads against, uh, against problems. So that's also one of the, the nicer features about this. Even though it's somewhat annoying, it, I think it's a good feature to have. <clears throat> so, I am going to uh, get my multimeter out and uh, show you the output waveform now. Here's the output waveform under no load on my Craftsman scope meter. Uh, this is the best thing I have, so excuse the crudeness of it, but uh, it is a modified sine wave output, just like most of the others. Other inexpensive ones out there. So, uh, this is under no load. If I turn this light on, it doesn't really change. Turn the heater on low. This is uh, pretty much fully loaded, 600 watts now, <clears throat> on the inverter. You can see that uh, on the top and bottom of this, it's pretty well steady. On the, uh, uh, let's grab something to point with here. On that less expensive Cobra inverter, the uh, voltage output sagged. It would uh, start high and sag down, go down to minus 145 and sag up, sag each time and it wouldn't hold a steady voltage. This one actually does and it does it quite nicely. So the output waveform is, uh, is a better one. Here I'll turn the heater on medium. This will be uh, 900 watts. And there it does sag slightly but uh, and now it shut off because I overloaded it for about five seconds. And it does sag slightly on a surge but not on a continuous rating. So this one works pretty well that way. <clears throat> Has very good voltage regulation and uh, has a, a very good surge capability and the output waveform is, uh, is pretty good. So the other couple things that, uh, that are important on these is uh, efficiency and uh, how well it handles thermals. So I'll take a look at those two next. I did a little bit of testing on it and uh, these are the results of those tests. Uh, basically the, uh, the efficiency curve here of the inverter looks about like this. It's uh, a little bit lower than I was expecting but uh, still still pretty acceptable. 
Uh, the no load current draw on it is about a quarter amp, even with the fan running continuously. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and uh, it is fused at 90 amps internally, which uh, is kind of interesting. But anyway, these uh, last two are running my refrigerator. My refrigerator takes 160 watts in that modified sine wave. Um, like I said, it does run the refrigerator, which is pretty good for a 600 watt unit. But uh, those are the efficiencies from it. And that is pretty comparable to, uh, to a couple other inverters that I've tested out this way. Well, I had recorded a short segment a few days ago that I intended to include in this video, but it appears I accidentally uh, deleted it. So I'll just describe it here. I had done a uh, continuous load test on this, a uh, half hour, 45 minutes, at about 650 watts continuous, just to show that uh, it actually can do its continuous output rating uh, without any issues. And uh, it got quite warm to the touch, but uh, nothing on it, including the cable connections or anything, were uh, excessively hot. And uh, it did run continuously without any issues. Um, didn't overheat, no thermal shutdown, uh, everything worked great. So I just wanted to uh, mention that I did do that, and uh, it'll actually do more than 600 watts continuously. Here's the inverter with the back cover off. When I had looked at that Cobra inverter, I was uh, very disgusted at the build quality. When I look at this one, my feelings are quite different. Uh, over here is the, uh, the input power, over here is the outlets that I had removed to get the back cover off. But uh, these 4 gauge uh, power lugs over here go to 8 gauge cables, which uh, is, is adequate for an inverter like this. Into the uh, circuit board, I haven't actually looked at the, the bottom to see what the soldering is like, but uh, it looked okay just peering in the end. Goes through 90 amps of fuses on the positive side here. Uh, comes over here to these uh, 16 volt input, input caps. I'm a little disappointed that they're only 16 volts, but that's what they are. Uh, there's some uh, high frequency uh, low voltage transistors here that uh, switch through these transformers. The inputs are in parallel, the outputs are in series to boost up the voltage. Comes over here to these uh, rectifier diodes through a choke into this 200 volt output cap. And from there um, it gets uh, switched through some uh, bridge drivers over here to the outlets. And uh, of course all this stuff over here is the control circuitry and driver circuitry and all that good stuff, but uh, that's in general how this is put together. <clears throat> and if I look at the, the quality of this thing, it looks pretty darn good for consumer electronics. The uh, circuit board itself is not FR4, it's uh, a cheaper material, I forget what, what the actual name of it is, but but that's acceptable for something like this. Um, they put in this uh, uh, common mode choke, ferrite common mode choke for uh, emissions, which they probably didn't have to do. Uh, so that's good. Most of the cheap imports don't do anything like that. Even if they violate FCC, they don't care because this costs them 15 cents and they don't want to spend that kind of money. But they spent it here. Everything looks uh, well soldered, well put together. No complaints there. One thing that I didn't like about this was that as soon as you power it up and turn it on, this fan runs and it runs continuously at full speed. So I looked at that a little bit after I got this to, uh, to see why it was that way and if I could put a, a temperature controlled fan on it or something. And uh, I found out that uh, it is this way for a good reason. It is this way because it's designed that way and it had to be that way. So uh, I did notice on eBay that someone was selling one of these inverters that they had put a temperature controlled fan on to save power. I found out that that's a very bad idea. You do not want to do that on something like this. And uh, the reason for that is because these rectifiers here, um, you can see that they're on heat sinks right in the airflow of the fan. These actually need that airflow even under light load to stay cool, otherwise they run quite hot. And this choke has a fairly high amount of core losses, which means that it runs very hot even with no load on it. Um, I guess not no load, but a very light load, it runs very hot. Uh, it gets up to a couple hundred degrees um, centigrade quite quickly even with the rest of this this inverter fairly cool. But uh, if you turn this fan on, these things stay nice and cool. Um, so they're right here in the airflow of the fan for a reason and uh, this fan does need to be running constantly. But uh, the fan itself is only, uh, I don't know what it is, 1.7 watts it says in the label and uh, the inverter itself only takes about a quarter amp when it's on so Aside from the noise, which I wish they picked a quieter fan, it's really not that big a deal. It's still a decently efficient inverter. A lot of the ones this size do take 0.2, 0.3 amps at idle. This one's no different, and that's even with a fan. So, no real complaints there. 
Now I want to talk about a little bit about uh, one of the quirks of, uh, of these power inverters that uh, people need to be concerned about.